This is Twit. A little bit of background. As you remember, in the 80s, they built, they uh, started to put together the digital broadcast standards. They looked at FM radio, and lo and behold, there was enough signal space in unused FM audio subcarriers. They said, hey, we'll leave the analog FM alone. We'll just put the so-called HD FM in the subcarriers. Nobody has to change the radios. Go out and buy an HD radio if you want. Right. They did the same thing, and I talked because I do over-the-air tuning. And I talked to an FCC engineer, and I said, you know, why didn't they do the same thing with high definition? Well, as you remember, if you go back into the late 40s, early 50s, they used a subcarrier up to carry the color vector, so they leave everybody's black and white set on analog unchanged. In, in order to make it backward compatible. Right. Exactly right, which also they led... To the 80s, they said, hey, let's try to do it. Lo and behold, one of the subcarriers is already used up. There's a few others left. They couldn't put all the digital signal information in the remaining subcarriers. The result was basically dig up the whole freeway, take the divider, <laughs> out, make the lanes wider, and you know clean out you know clean out the trough and make everything you know new new and improved yeah. and resurface it and everything. And that's why everybody had to buy either a converter box or right. you know, go out and buy an HDC. Now the question is. You know and I know there's a finite signal capacity of six megahertz wide in a in a video TV signal. That's right. That Not is the sure that is the broadcast TV. bandwidth, uh, the width of the of each channel that that the information can be sent along, and that's been true for a long, long time. Right. And not to mention the FCC has chopped down the top of the broadcast TV band UHF to be 900 megahertz is now down to 500, and they've used the space for other things. So they scrunched all the TV stations in the country down into the low 500s because the signal only goes 40 miles. But the point here is, as we go through time and we get more and more of these new formats, I don't know what the width of the signal is on satellite. I don't know what it is on cable. Maybe you do, but aren't we going to be faced with a world of essentially? All these ultra formats are going to essentially be relegated to a box in your home and some special disc that you buy and you connect it to your set. You're never going to be able to see this stuff over the air. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, you make a very good point that um, Ultra HD has four times as many pixels as HD. Um, it has, and it's going to have potentially a lot more information than HD in terms of dynamic range and color and bit depth and all that kind of stuff. Um, and how is that going to get squeezed into a broadcast channel? This is one of the big questions. Right. Now, at NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters uh, Conference, this year, uh, 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 the Japanese uh, NHT, uh, the Japanese public broadcasting system, was demonstrating broadcasting 8K, which is yet beyond the 4K standard coming up, uh, in a normal broadcast channel. And, but they were doing it across a booth, right? So it was, you know, a few, maybe a dozen feet or two. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't over 40 miles. Now, they said that they had been doing some testing in Japan, uh, and they had they had managed to reach, I think, 17 miles, something like that. So, okay, so, you know, they're working on it. Part of the solution to that problem is um, compression, or what is called co uh, video yeah, coding. Don't you can contaminate the quality of the video signal. When you talk upscaling and compression and interpolation, I was a math major in college. <laughs> wonderful techniques. They try to put something there that's not there, but aren't you compromising the quality of the signal? You are, but but in terms of taking a 4K signal, a one of these really ultra signals that you're talking about, and pumping it through a broadcast channel, uh, you're not talking about adding or interpolating information. You're just talking about squeezing it down and removing as much information as you possibly can in order for it to fit in a given pipe. And the pipe for broadcast is very small, and so you'd have to really, really compress it down a lot. And you are going to sacrifice quality with that, no question about it. Um, but because of all this, what you're talking about in the broadcast realm, that's why Ultra HD is not going to be over-the-air broadcast anytime soon. Uh -huh. It's going to be delivered online. It's going to be delivered by streaming and or downloading. Yeah. Right? So you're going to be... You're you're gonna, gonna let it cook all night, then... Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> if you stream it, if you do a live stream, you can do that now. Netflix is streaming House of Cards. 
Uh, YouTube has a bunch of content actually in 4K now. Um, and other companies, MGO, I think, and some others have, have announced that they're going to start streaming 4K. That's got to be compressed within an inch of its life. Yeah. Because the bandwidth coming into most homes is, I think, the per capita income, uh, the per capita bandwidth in the U.S. is something like three megabits per second. Uh, now, certainly, some of us have more than that. Uh, my colleague at AVS Forum, uh, Mark Henninger, has a hundred megabits coming into his house, more than. Wow. So, boy, if you got that, you, you're in good shape. But most of us don't. Right. <laughs> and you, if you do have that, you're paying for it, right? Yep. So, well, I mean, if you look, I mean, the current over the air standards, MPEG 2, mm -hmm. which, I mean, in, that's it, the codec the now codec. That, that we're talking about. Codec stands for coder decoder, and it's a way of compressing, throwing out a bunch of information in order to fit that signal down the pipe. And MPEG 2 is what we're using now for broadcast. Right. It's very old, very old, and, and not very efficient compared to, you know, uh, AVC, um, AVC with 264, now H.265. Right. So, um, I mean, the math gets better, the computers get faster, and right, right, that's exactly right. And that is the that is the salvation, I think, of ultra HD as a streaming medium. We have stronger, more powerful processors, memories cheaper, um, and bandwidth increases over time. I mean, the infrastructure in the U.S. for getting that stuff from the provider to your home is going to require, as, as somebody once said, you know, hard hats and pickaxes, right? Right. You're going to have to dig up the streets and put down better cable. And, and get ready to pay for it because yes. uh, Comcast and Time Warner, as Leo likes to call them, the evil empires of, uh, of the world, are, are, they want to charge us for every bit that comes into our house. That's, exactly. That's so. how they're going to, you yep. know, separate yep. us yeah, from our money. Right on. I mean, just by reference, I, I have an LG... 47 inch smart TV. I don't have cable. I look at it line of sight four miles to the to the mountains where the broadcasting towers are. And I'll tell you, you look at Macy's Parade, you look at Tournament of Roses Parade, you know, in high definition, the picture just blows you away. I look at it at other people's around here on cable, you know, and I wouldn't give two nickels for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've always said that, that broadcast HD is really among the best looking HD you can Absolutely. get. Uh, except for Blu-ray, right? I would say you know, Blu-ray is the is the is gold the standard. Best, yeah. yeah, but in terms of of receiving s content into your home from outside, uh, over-the-air broadcasting really does look the best on HD. Now, whether that will remain true with UHD, Ultra HD, or 4K. Uh, remains to be seen, and we're not going to see it for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be streamed. It's going to be downloaded. We're going to have a 4K disc format probably sometime next year. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as Leo is fond of saying, you know, physical media is dead. And certainly Blu-ray sales are dropping. And so, you know, people are, again, opting for convenience over quality, quality which I think is going to be the way of the future, right? It happened with audio. We had SACD and we had DVD audio, both disc formats, producing better music, better quality audio than CD could do. Both of them failed in yeah. favor of MP3, right? <laughs> which throws away 90% of the audio data in order to have it be a very low, si uh, small file that can be squirted across the internet easily. 